Hello and welcome to What The Math. Today we'll be talking about geometric sequences. And one of the more common examples of geometric sequences is uh, bacterial growth that you actually can find in real life. This is a visual example of what's happening here. So let's just say this is uh, every hour you get uh, a bacteria that splits into two and here they, they actually become two. So this doubles, here they become four doubles and here they become eight doubles again and so on and so forth. So the geometric sequence here is that um, this number or a previous number doubles and becomes a new number, uh, which is the double of a previous number. So here, the geometric sequence can be written as equals to uh, first number, which is u1 times multiplied by um, some kind of a number. So in this case, it's two. And uh, for every consecutive number, this number two is actually uh, gets an exponent. So here, the exp uh, for, for example, um, if we look at this third number, which is n equals three, it's actually two times two squared. Fourth number, n equals four, is two times two to the power of three. Uh, and so on and so forth. So the fifth number is going to be 2 times 2 t uh, to the power of 4. So you can see that the power here is related to the number n, so the, to the actual uh, sequence. And for, for the fourth number, it's third power. For the third number, it's second power. So it's actually uh, 2 to the power of n minus 1. And in a nutshell, this is what you have to know about this particular chapter. Uh, geometric sequences can be described as uh, basically a pattern where a number is multiplied, not added, uh, like in ar arithmetic sequences, but multiplied by a constant number. And it can be written as this. Um, in your book, you'll actually see it written a little bit differently. It's actually written as un equals to u1 times r. To the power of uh, to the power of n minus one. Now this is what you'll see on your test as well, and this is what you have to kind of be familiar with. Um, and here the uh, letter R refers to this constant number that uh, the sequence is multiplied by constant number. And this was, if you remember from arithmetic sequences, this was actually D in the arithmetic sequences. This is uh, also constant number. Uh, and it doesn't actually matter what letter you use, it doesn't really change anything, but it just, it's a little bit easier to remember if you use a little bit different number. So here it's multiplied, and for D it was added. So just to kind of quickly summarize these, this here was the arithmetic se uh, sequence from the previous video, and basically it was U1 plus N minus 1 multiplied by D, and for geometric sequences it's U1 multiplied by uh, by r to the power of n minus 1. So this n minus, n minus 1 represents the previous number in sequence. So you can see there's some similarities here to this n minus 1 here. There's u1 in both of them. And the only really difference is that this is multiplied, this is added, and r and d are pretty much basically just a constant number. And the vocabulary that you have to know from geometric sequences is, so quite, just similar to your arithmetic sequences, un is known as the nth term um, or the general term. So if you on the test, it asks you for, um, oops, not geometric, general. Uh, for a general term or the nth term, that's what they're asking for, general term. Uh, this is known as the first term, very similar to arithmetic sequences. And this is known as the common ratio, common ratio. That's why it's R, because it's a ratio. For the arithmetic sequences, um, G was known as the common difference, and that's why it's the common difference. And the letter was D. So let's try one of the examples from the book. This is example 9 on page 138, and it basically says the following. Geometric sequence has u2 at minus 6 and u5 at 162. Find the general term. So first of all, let's find out, well, let's uh, write down what's needed of us. So we have u2 at uh, second term is minus 6, 
and our fifth term is 162 this is minus 6 minus 162 and we need to find the general term which is un un is basically the function or the formula for this particular geometric sequence what we need to find for this is um so we need to find u1 where because you, uh this is the actual formula so we need u1 u1 is unknown and so is the common ratio common ratio is unknown so let's uh, figure out how to find this and the easier was, or the one of the easiest ways of finding this is first to rewrite what we have in terms of the function so u2 oh this is too dark let's use something brighter u2 equals to uh, u1 times common ratio and we know that it's uh, n minus 1 so it's actually well let's just write n minus 1 first but we know that it's going to be first power so it equals to u1 times r uh, to the power of 1 and u5 equals to same thing except a different power n minus 1 and in this case it's going to be u1 times um, r to the power of 4. So that's what we have so far and we need to find out what the un is or u1 and common ratio is. So if we actually write the ratio of these two numbers, so for example if we take u5 divided by u2 we will get 162 divided by minus 6 and we can also rewrite this in formula now. We can actually write u1 times r to the power of 4 divided by u1 times r to the power of 1. Uh, and here we can see that what well, this will cancel out and what we'll get is r to the power of 3 and looking back at here we can see that it's actually now it's going to be a number. So let's write this number it's going to be uh, I believe it's minus 27. So r to the power of 3 or r cubed is minus 27. So we're looking for a cubic root of minus 27. Now because it's a cubic root, we can actually have a negative inside. Only square roots cannot have negatives. And cubic root of minus 27 is, I believe, minus 3. So our r is minus 3. Now we have our r, we have... Um, and actually, no, that's, it. that's what we have. So now we have to find u1 and we also have to find un. To find u1, we can actually use one of these functions, one of these formulas right here, and rewrite uh, what we now have. Let's just write it over here. Rewrite what we have. Let's just use u2. Um, u2 equals to u1 times r to the power of 1. Uh, and we know that u2 is minus 6, and then it equals to u1 times minus 3. So you can see that u1 is here, uh, here is going to be 2. So that means that, therefore, u1 equals to 2. And that's all we need. So now we can just rewrite this whole thing and find un, our general term. un equals to 2 times uh, minus 3 to the power of n minus 1. And that's the final answer for the general term. And now just for fun, let's try one of the word problems. This is an example, example 11, I think it's on the same page. And it says it's the following, the initial population of rabbits on a farm was 50. The population increased by 7% each week. How many rabbits were present after 15 weeks and 30 weeks? How long would it take for the population to reach 500? So this is a multi-step question and this is something that you will more likely to see on a test because they like to have word problems. And here, let's, uh, let's start with what we have. So we have u1, which is 50, that's initial population. And now we also have to figure out what this means. So 7% each week means that it is increasing by 7%, which is like saying that um, if you had 100 rabbits first week, then the second week you're going to have 107 rabbits. In other words, it's multiplied by 1.07. So R here is 1.07. And uh, we are looking for, let's just do one of these problems. So let's do the first one, 15 weeks. So um, our n is 15 weeks. 
per 15. So if we use the formula above, we can find u15 is equal to u1 times 1.07 to the power of 14. And this is best done on your calculator. Oh, and I actually forgot to change this to 50. This should be 50, not u1. So this is going to be, let me just erase this. So this should be 50. Uh, so let's use our calculators and we're going to enter 50 here uh times and let's use brackets just so that we don't uh confuse our calculator 1.07 um now here you can actually just enter 14 to and it will give you the actual answer but i want to make this a, a, um, a function for the next question and i'll show you why um so this is going to be to the power of and also in brackets is going to be um x minus one so our n here is going to be x. So our function here, this is our general function for this geometric sequence is 50 times 1.07. Uh, so now if I actually go to my table, what I'll see is I'll see all of the answers. So here at first week we have 50, then at week 15, we have 128.93 rabbits. At week 30, so this is basically the, the much easier, much faster way of solving this. At 30 weeks, we have 355 rabbits. And now the question is, how long will it take for the population to reach 500? And this is why I did this as a function and not just by plot, uh, by making this 14, because it's a much easier way of solving these problems. Uh, so here, what you're looking for, you're looking at your y-axis, basically at number of rabbits, and you, you're trying to find 500. And the 500 is right here. So after 36 weeks, the population is going to reach five, over 500. And basically that's the answer to all of these three questions. It took me very, very few seconds to uh, try to solve them. If I did this manually, if I actually did 15 first and then 30 uh, after that, and then I tried to look for 500, it would take me at least five minutes. So this is a much faster, much shorter way of solving geometric sequences by basically using your table and by uh, putting your geometric sequence as a function where your n is your x. All right, so hopefully, hopefully this was helpful, and I just used the word hope twice, that's okay. Uh, thank you for watching, and good luck to you, and bye-bye.